Hi everybody, it's Stephen Brook and welcome to Architectural Photography and Composition. How do I get clients when I have no clients? And this is not just for architectural photographers. Illustrators have this issue. Architects have this issue. That's why they enter design competitions sometimes. But take a look at these self-portraits by Picasso, Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Cezanne, Monet, Kahlo. What did they do when maybe there weren't clients around or they didn't have a patron buying something right away? They did what we need to do. Be your own client. And if the what that means really is that if weather's good, you need to be out photographing. Now I did a video a while back called Be Your Own Client. And and the gist of that is that wherever it is that you live um, should be a laboratory for your own ideas. The quality doesn't matter what any room, the furniture, there's a right place for it to be. Figure that out and and photograph that. But what I want to talk today with you in detail is how to create an architectural portfolio and strategies to increase your client base. So here are what I think are the basic elements that you need in your portfolio. And I'm going to go over each of these historic architecture, contemporary work, modern and traditional residential and commercial infrastructure, interiors, landscape and drone photographs. And then after we go through this, I'm going to talk about how you ought to ruthlessly review your work talk about targeting clients, and then also some suggestions on potential clients. So let's start out right away with historic architecture. Make a quick survey of the most important historic buildings in your area, residential and commercial. These are great to show a potential client. They probably know these buildings. And if you have a wonderful fresh take on them, they'll appreciate that. Consider shooting them in color, but also in black and white. Historic buildings look great in black and white. And then for museum houses, most of them have no budget. Offer to share your photographs with them. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Number two, contemporary work. And by contemporary, I mean things that are done right now, whether it's modern design, traditional design, residential work or commercial work. Find the best architecture in your area and photograph the, a signature shot of each. Let me add here, good work begets good work. If you photograph architecture that you know isn't really wonderful or maybe urbanistically it's bad, you have that in your portfolio and you show a really good architect that photograph, they're not going to see through the photo. They're going to look at this ugly architecture and wonder why the hell you photographed that. Good work begets good work. Infrastructure, industrial work, bridges, factories, roadways, stations, they can make really dramatic views, especially at night. Number three, interiors, and this is really important. You have to have a good selection of interiors, both residential and commercial. Public buildings are great because their spaces are usually bigger and you can show a client that you're able to handle these really large spaces. Places like restaurants, these are a nightmare. And if you can get a chance to photograph one to show that you can handle all the thousands of little details that go into making a great restaurant photo, do that and have that in your portfolio. And again, historic structures. This is a Frank Lloyd Wright interior. Those also make really good opportunities. You may have a, an architect that specializes in restoration work. Typically, their budgets, the architect's budgets, are not so wonderful, not so high. They would appreciate getting photographs of their work. Number uh, five, landscape. Public gardens and private gardens. And remember, these are best photographed really early morning or late afternoon. And for a public garden to get in those times, you may need permission. Number six, drone photography. Years ago, maybe that wasn't so important, but it's really important now. And if you're thinking about maybe specializing in 
uh, real estate photography, real estate clients expect that you have a drone and know how to use it and can produce really great drone photos. Once you've finished and you have your work going, review it as critically as you can. You need to be ruthless. You need to look at the photos as if somebody else did them. You need to take yourself out of the equation and just look at them as if you were an architect looking over this portfolio to decide whether or not you want to hire this architectural photographer. Remember the first rule of architectural photography. The verticals are parallel to the picture plane. If yours are parallel, those photos need to go. This is a sine qua non. You can't really violate that principle. Every photo has to be a home run. It has to be shot at the right time of day, the right kind of shadows, the right angle, cleaned up. Let me say, I know that there are some approaches to architectural photography that say, well, it doesn't matter. The sky can be burned out. The shadows don't really matter. You just show up whenever you show up. If there's crap in the way, you just shoot it anyway, because that's real and that's natural. It's also artless and it's lazy. D please, I beg of you, don't go in that direction. We have looked at through the, these, uh, through the other videos, 500 or so years of brilliant architectural depiction that have laid the groundwork for what we do as architectural photographers. And I encourage you again to try to follow those edicts. Your goal is to try to recover that ideal that the architect had before the first shovel of dirt was done before the first brick was laid. That's your goal as an architectural photographer. So all of these things matter. And in the photographs that you take for your portfolio, working as your own client, do that. Make them as good as they possibly can be. And finally, keep in mind your portfolio is a work in progress. You get new things that are wonderful, put those in. If some of the other images you have don't look as good in comparison, out they go. You need to be ruthless. Five great photos are better than five good ones and five not so good ones because that you, the, an architect of sophisticated eye is going to look at the bad ones and, and is maybe it's going to overlook the good ones. So only good work. I want to encourage you, of course, to have a website. Most of you I'm sure do. But if you have a website that has other kinds of photography, I encourage you to make a separate website just for architecture, interiors, and landscape. A potential client doesn't want to look through all your other stuff, your personal things, your vacation shots, your portrait work, whatever. They just want to see your work for architecture and landscape and design, not the other stuff. And if you have, if you don't have a website, make a new one dedicated to architecture. Keep your design simple and clean. Don't let your photos get caught up in a really busy website layout. You're selling your architectural photography, not design. Get the cleanest kind of format that you can. Keep it simple. Keep the typography simple. Keep the verbiage to a minimum. You want to look at the photos. You don't want to read paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. I separate the projects. This is my menu in my website. And these are the topics that, that I separate out. If your client, let's say, is doing healthcare, they may not care about anything else you do. They're gonna jump right to the healthcare. Let's see how they handle hospitals. Let's see how they handle clinic interiors. That's a specialty for them. They wanna know that you can handle that. And then have an easy method for contacting you. They should be able to go to one page, fill something out or whatever, and get to you without having to go through a lot of navigation to get in touch with you. On, again, I say only post your very best photographs. I have a video on creating a contact sheet in PDF format. Some potential clients might not 
want to bother to go to a website. You say, well, do you have a contact sheet? Do you have a, do you have something that shows me your work? Sure, I do. And you send it off to them and it's three to five megabytes or so, not really big, something they can easily take in an email, open it up and see what you have to do. And again, I recommend that you separate out the project types. I call this targeting specific clients. If there is an architect that whose work you really admire, then they haven't called you, you don't have clients yet, and they haven't called you to shoot, you can go out and photograph several of their projects. And if they're public domain, you can go out and shoot anything you want. Try to make an appointment with them and see if they will see you and look at your work that you've done on their projects. If they say no, what the hell? You Now you have new images, at least in your portfolio. I put this down as a diplomatic tip because I have messed up on this before. Don't criticize their existing photos unless they ask you, well, what do you think about these? Chances are, if they're in the market for a photographer, what they have already may be less than wonderful. So if you walk in there and say, your photos look like hell, you've wasted a lot of money, they are not going to like you and they're not going to hire you. Show them your work. And then if they say, well, would you take a look at this other stuff and just kind of tell me what you think? Then you can say what you think. But, but don't volunteer that information. I have done that on a couple of occasions and it has failed every single time. People don't want to hear that. They've spent money for those photos. They don't want to hear you trashing them. Even if they're trash, they don't want to hear it from you. Potential clients and young architects and design firms just starting out rarely have budgets. You can go to them and say, look, I will photograph your work for a reduced fee I'm going to help you get better. I'm going to help you get better known. When you do better, we'll go back to a normal. I have done that. Here's one photograph that I took of Raul Rodriguez, who worked for a big company, went off on his own, and I photographed his house, which was his first project that he did on his own. That was back in nine, nine, 1980, and I, and I still work with Raul. And I started with him day one in his career. I don't have a lot of clients like that, but I did start out taking on young architects who appreciated that. Historic houses and museum houses, I mentioned them before, they have no budget. And a good time to get them is right after they do a renovation. They have spent their money on a renovation. I guarantee you they don't have money for photography. And somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody is going to go in there with a, a phone. Maybe they'll do well, you know, maybe they won't. But you'll do well. You go in and make a pitch to them. Local design magazines are always looking for content. You can make an appointment, show them your portfolio, ask to get an assignment or and I don't do this, but you can if you're starting out is you find a project you like, photograph it and then send the magazine the photographs. If they're really good, I promise you they probably will will publish that article. Public gardens. Again, you can go photograph and show them the work. Historic preservation organizations, again, very, very little budget. I have a video a while ago on why architectural photographers should be involved using their skills to promote historic preservation. I do a lot of work with uh, Date Heritage Trust and photograph endangered architecture. And then businesses that have just opened, you're not being predatory. You can go in and say, have you contact, uh, contracted anybody to photograph you new, your new installation? They may not have, and you will be first in the door. If you do get a client, multiply your client contacts. This is Richard Skinner, who was a longtime client of mine. I photographed his house. I contact the general contractor, the people who do the woodworking the interior designer, the landscape designer. In almost all of those cases, I started out with, with Richard as my client and ended up with three or four more clients who I work with separate from Richard. They do other work for other architects. They are now my clients. It's just 
um, a, a pyramidal effect. I start with one, I end up shooting that job, and now I have five clients. It takes time, it takes patience, but if you do your work well, I promise you, the work will come. And remember, have a business card ready, even though the world is now going towards electronic business cards, not everybody uses them, and have a one-page resume ready. No clients yet? You're not alone. Be your own client. If the weather's good, you're out there shooting. So, if this all makes sense to you, if you think this is helpful, give the video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. First of all, it's free. I don't bombard you with stuff. We get, when I have something interesting to, to tell you, you'll find out about it and we'll have a new video out there. If you would like to support the site, you can go to Stephen Brook Photography and purchase a copy of Architectural Photography and Composition. It's really the one book you need. It has everything in there. And for $9.99, it's a bargain. It's a 360 page book. Every page on there, I promise you, has something that will help you with your work. Now, if you're not as comfortable working with a book on your own, I will guide you every step of the way in my course on Fundamentals of Architectural Photography and Composition. It's available as a eight hours of instruction on Udemy. There are, I think, 46 lessons. We're putting out um, bonus videos as well. I think you'll find either the course or the book will help, your, help you immeasurably if you're just starting out it will jumpstart your work. If you're a pro and you've been in there, you'll find some things I think that will help you um, tune up some of your other work. So thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.